Hi, my name is Tim Lynch. I'm a senior lecturer at Monash University, Gippsland campus, which is in the state of Victoria in Australia. And uh, the presentation I'm going to discuss today or make is swimming education in society, developing ability and confidence. Australia is a proud sporting nation, in particular within swimming, the nation's most successful Olympic sport. Almost half of Australia's Olympic gold medals have been won through swimming events. Subsequently, Australia is the second most successful Olympic swimming nation after the United States of America. Now, with the 2012 London Olympics, it's most appropriate that swimming education at the grassroots of Australian society is investigated through the experiences, or through my experiences as a primary school teacher, health and phys ed specialist teacher in primary schools, and teacher educator at university level. These experiences are reflected upon to share a storyline. And Professor Robin Ewing from Sydney, the University of Sydney, refers to a storyline as narrative threads that interweave to emerge ideas, themes and patterns. And it accentuates, my storyline accentuates my belief of inclusive swimming and water safety education for all children in, in primary schools. And it also explores the delivery of this within a community collaboration process within the community of Gippsland. It's very important in Australia um, for swimming and water safety. It's even more important, pertinent because of the how close people are associated with water, living very close to coastline. Um, eight in ten Australians live within 80 kilom uh, 50 kilometres of the coastline of Australia. Now within the unit of EDF 2616, Experiencing Aquatic Environments, which sits within the Bachelor of Primary Education course at Monash University, um, by choosing this unit, the pathways were created to develop swimming ability and confidence for children in primary schools. It developed initial teacher educator students confidence and also reinforced and and helped build confidence with school teachers so this paper explores a collaboration or this presentation explores a collaboration which planted the seed of opportunity for many children to one day possibly compete at the olympic games if their ability permits or to enjoy a healthy and safe well-being through physical activities involving water as a child i was an average swimmer but i remember that the opportunities that I had to be able to develop, um, to become a confident and competent swimmer. And those opportunities were through accessing the local swimming pool and having time to just practice and, and um, develop my swimming strokes. Now as a young child I remember in year three I couldn't swim and I had fear of the water, um, deep water above my head. But I love water, but just had a fear for deep water. And that has placed me in good stead for understanding children in this similar position. As I developed my swimming skills and living in a country town and having a, a local swimming pool where we'd spend a lot of time, my brothers and I, and having that access and opportunity, it helped me also realise the importance of time, opportunity uh, and instruction. Reflecting on my swimming experiences as a teacher, uh, reflecting on a particular year in 1996 where I had a year four class. I was 21 years of age, my second year out from university. Um, and the school was St. Matthew's Primary School in Brisbane. Now this class, like all classes in the school, went swimming in first term once a week for six weeks. And that would culminate with the school swimming carnival or gala, as it's also referred to as in some countries. During swimming, swimming lessons, the teachers would supervise the children on a bus. Um, I'd observe from a distance as the swimming instructors would deliver the 40-minute lesson. And then we'd also have another six-week block that would be implemented in Term 4. Now, Australia has four terms per year. Term 1 and Term 4 are our warmer summer uh, terms. The purpose of the Swimming Carnival Year was for everyone to come together and to celebrate you, how much you've improved, uh, 
and to have a fun competitive spirit um, representing your house colours and a bit of rivalry and um, and uh, healthy competition but it was also an ulterior purpose was to be able to select a school team to take those children who were talented to the next level to um, compete for districts if they were talent shone through there and were good enough they could go into regional then from regional they could go to state and state to national so it enabled a pathway for spotting talent and allowing those people to compete as, as far as their ability would take them and one talented swimmer in this particular class was a young girl by the name of Alicia Coots and Alicia who's now 24 years of age just competed in the London Olympics and uh, Alicia won five medals medals in the, in the London Olympics 2012 London Olympics and winning five medals has placed her in to only two athletes have done that before in swimming that's Ian Thorpe and Shane Gould in 1972, Ian Thorpe in Sydney 2000. Um, Alicia Coots won five medals, a gold in the 4x100 metre freestyle relay, silvers in the 200 metre individual medley, and 4x200 metre relay, and also in the 4x100 metre medley relay. She received a silver medal and a bronze medal in the 100 metre butterfly which really is quite outstanding but that um, we can see that and acknowledge what she's done but she's had to overcome much adversity throughout her life um, bouts of uh, things like glandular fever um, bowel problems, operations and uh, as a young girl in 1994 uh, November 1994 Alicia lost her father to Hodgkin lymphoma and so her mother Julie raised Alicia and her two brothers as a sole parent which you know, of course there was financial difficulties and things like that and Julie would always make sure that she could get Alicia to swimming training and, and the many hours that that took there was also another former swimming coach uh, David Ukehart, um who was from Brisbane's Cleveland Aquatic Centre and he also spotted Alicia's talents from a very young age and, and assisted her with that now around this same same time, in, in, or a couple of years later, 1996, I had a football coach at Maine Tigers Australian Football Club in the Queensland State Australian Football League, and his name was John Seaboam. And John was a um, very talented footballer, Australian rules footballer. He did very well in South Australia. He played 319 games for Glenelg Tigers. He played in the 85 and 86 Premiership teams, and um, his wife Karen was also a gifted uh, sports person who represented state league netball in South Australia and was an open swimmer. And John and his family moved across, and he had um, he has four children now. But at the time, he had uh, three: Tom, Jack, and Emily. Emily's their only daughter, and they now have also have Will. And um, Emily, their only daughter, was Alicia's teammate at the London Olympics. Um, in 2008, the Beijing Olympics, at the age of 16, she, Emily was the youngest member of the swimming team. She won a gold medal in the 4 by 100 metre medley and came ninth in the 100 metre backstroke. She won eight medals at the 2010 Commonwealth Games in Delhi. In the London Olympics, Emily won gold in the 4 by 100 metre freestyle relay. And she won two silvers for her um, backstroke events. Now, the reason why I'm reflecting on Alicia and Emily is because